the Flex Seal Bird Bath is still holding up. Leave the cat alone. That cat has been there for 10 years and it doesn't care about you barking. It's not afraid of you. It knows you can't get through the fence. And for five years, you bark at it every morning. You harshen or chill. You're, you're stressing out the coffee time. Well, today I'm getting started on Desiree's door cheat. Desiree Haskell ordered a door cheat. And, uh, today I'm going to get as far as uh, probably tempering it, and uh, or heat treating it and tempering it. And uh, anyway, I'm going to get a good start on it today. Alright, today I'm going to do a roast in my Solovore solar oven. I'm going to bake some potatoes and I'm going to use my favorite spice on the roast. And I just wanted to show you the deal we got. 622. So uh, we saved $8.32 on this. I guess because it was nearing its best by age or something. All looks good. All right, let me get this out, get it on some tin foil, get my seasoning on there, and get it in the pan. It's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze, but uh, it'll work. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> wrap some uh, potatoes up in tin foil, and I'm not going to put them in a pan. I'm just going to set them in the solar oven. All right, we'll see you in about. Six hours. All right, I got my potatoes all washed up, and uh, look at that strange looking potato. I mean, I don't want to cook it, I want to build a shrine to it and make people worship it. Worship my potato! No, we worship the chair god! Worship my potato, or you will die! Okay, that's enough of that. All righty. I'm gonna put, uh, you know, I the big ones I just I wrap up individually, but I think I'm gonna put a whole bunch of these on either side of that pan. So I'm gonna make two piles of potatoes in tin foil. See if they'll cook that way, because they're kind of small. It's here! It's here! It's here! This is mahogany, and uh, I traded Darren Mary Mayhem. Country Living, uh, a swamp rat for some uh, teak and some mahogany. Uh, he sent me the teak. As a matter of fact, the teak is what I used on the handle of the knife I made for uh, Brad and Krista Big Family Homestead's uh, giveaway. And uh, they just did a video showing that knife yesterday. And uh, that was the teak that Darren gave me. And uh, anyway, this is the, the mahogany. I uh, can't wait to try this out on a knife. Boy, that's going to be some pretty, pretty wood. Love that grain. Thanks, Darren. Looking forward to... That's a lot of knife handles there. That's probably one, two, at least three, possibly four knife handles. That's going to be great. Thanks, Darren. Man, look at all the wood that my friend Dwayne gave me. This is tulip wood from the tulip tree. This is a big chunk of spalted oak. That's poplar, Spanish, what do you say? Spanish cedar, walnut, walnut, walnut. And I got the mahogany from Darren. And my friend Rob, five acres on the bayou, gave me all kinds of really good sandpaper. And they're all the grits that I use. Actually, I'm going to use that now because I'm fixing to start making <coughs> Desiree's knife. And uh, I got the handles cut out. I think I'm going to use, I want to contact her first, but I think I want to use some liners like maple. Uh, I do have purple heart. 
I have some some eighth inch purple heart but uh, I want to run that by her before I do I got the fancy mosaic pins for her knife so let me get started I'm gonna cut that out and then I'm gonna go around the corner here and shape it into a knife put a put the bevel on it uh, and then come over here and sand all the grinding marks out of it and then heat treat it temper it polish it again <laughs> uh, put it on the machines over here to polish it to a mirror finish and then put the handles on it and shape the handles make a sheath put an edge put a final polish on it and ship it let's get started all right i've got the blade cut out i've got it cut out on my bandsaw i've got it shaped on my jet 2 by 42 belt grinder uh i've had it in here my vice where i take my die grinder with a uh, sand sanding drums on it and I sand off the, uh, the the major grind marks and then I take my file and I square the top edge of the blade so uh, that's where I'm at now now I need to uh, drill my quarter pin holes mount it to my jig my grinding jig and grind my bevels and that will be the ne next step and then when I grind the bevels I come back to this and then I start with uh, what is it 100 120 grit sandpaper and I start grinding all the sanding marks out of this 120, 150, 220, 320, 400, 600. At 600, I can put it on the, uh, the buffers. And uh, that's probably a day or two away because uh, I'm not good for an entire day out here. Plus my wife is out working in the yard and I feel guilty being in my shop while she's out working in the yard. So. I'm going to get a little more done on this and then go out and work in the yard with my wife. We'll be back. Alright, it's 2 in the afternoon. Uh, I did not ask Desiree if she would like the walnut liners. Uh, I'm just going to start doing this from now on on, on the fancy knives because uh, the liners add un petit je ne sais quoi. A little extra quality. I think that's what that means. I've never used that before, but uh, that's maple inner and walnut outer, and boy, the walnut's got some really nice figure in it, and uh, walk over here. Actually, I meant roll, and uh, this is what we got so far. I'm still sending the scratches out. Let me put this light here so you can see the scratches. Let's see. I got to catch them just right. All right, can you see the scratches there? Right up here in the plunge area. Let me see if I can see them better this way. And uh, I'm sanding down to 180 right now. And uh, I got to finish sanding these out to 180. And then I go, I think I'm going to skip up to 320 because this is really, really uh, feeling pretty smooth. I'm going to try if I, I'm going to see if I can go right to 320 instead of 220. If I can't, I got 220 right here. That's the 320. But uh, here, I'll show you what the other side looks like. This is what I started with. And it's 2 in the afternoon. And it's taken me this long to sand the scratches out. It's taken me this long to get it to look like that. <laughs> and then when I get this sanded down to about 600, then I put it on a the buffer. There's no no uh, 
steps you can skip, although I am going to try and skip uh, 220 grit and go right to 320, but I mean there's no uh, important steps. Okay, let me get back to work here. I'm going to have this uh, blade probably polished before the day is out. And uh, that will be that will be the most I've ever done on a blade in one single day. I made this blade, uh, cut it out on a bandsaw, shaped it on my belt grinder, uh, put the bevel on it on my belt grinder, drilled the measured and drilled the uh, the holes for the pins, and they are exact, exactamundo. I used a uh, Vermeer calipers to make sure they're dead center. And then uh, I get to this point where, oh yeah, I sand this out using my uh, drum uh, die grinder with a drum sander on it. And I take the drum sander across the top and uh, remove all the sanding scratches. And then I take a file and square the top. It feels a little rough right here. I've got to hit that again. All right in here, feels rough. Okay, I'm gonna get back to work. This is <clears throat> this is what the other side looks like. I've already started. I'm probably about halfway done rubbing the scratches out. Got to get this this one right here. And what I do is I usually start at the tip and work my way in to get rid of these scratches here. Let me. There we go. So I'm actually I'm glad I looked because you've got to look at it from different angles, and I can see right up here. I've got a few scratches I still got to work out. And the reason is, if you miss any, if you miss any, when you get to the polish. Uh, it shows up and you can't polish it out. So you've got to come all the back around here So there's really there's no skipping steps and You have to make absolute certain that the scratches are out from the original bevel grinding uh, And then you have to make sure the scratches are out from each level of grit each number grit up to 600 or else is you're just wasting your time I said I was going to try to skip and go to 220, uh, 320, and I'm not. I'm going to go to 220 just because I got to thinking I've done this before. And while it is tempting to see if you can skip a step and cut a little time off, uh, you end up wasting that time going over the buffer, buffing it out, and then realizing that you've got to come back and and go start at that step you skipped and start all over again. So you really you end up wasting time instead of saving time. There's no, just no avoiding each step. And uh, now it's uh, 2.45 or so, so I've spent another 45 minutes on the bottom side. I've got this flipped over now. So probably in about an hour, I will have this ready to buff out and then heat treat, temper, buff out again, and then put handles on. I'm really making progress. Uh, I got another doctor's appointment tomorrow, Thursday, so I won't be able to work on this Thursday. So uh, Friday or Saturday, I'll be able to get back out here and uh, temper it, uh, heat treat it, temper it, put the handles on it, and uh, th let that sit overnight. And then the next day, come out and start shaping the handles. So it's coming along. Well, here's, here's a perfect example or an explanation as to why these polished knives cost more than the other knives. Uh, you can see that I'm gonna have to come back, start all over with a 180, and sand these out here. The rest of the knife is looking good, but I didn't get the scratches out of the, I guess that's the bolster area. And uh, it's 96 in my shop. It's 3:30. I'm going to uh, bring my roast in, take out of the solar oven, take a shower, and uh, by the time I take a shower, the roast will have cooled down some. We're going to eat some roast. See you inside.
I'll be back out here tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. I got a doctor's appointment. Maybe Friday to uh, re-sand this. Now that I know uh, where I'm, where I need to hit it again. All right. See you uh, Friday. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> Boy, does that look good, huh? 300 degrees, about five hours, six hours, and the potatoes are without a doubt done. Wow. All right, let me get some of this cut up and a potato buttered. We'll be right back. Now that is a nice, healthy amount of butter right there. And uh, I told my wife there wasn't enough for both of us to eat. And, uh, oh, oh goodness, I'm going to have to eat all that butter now. Crap, what am I gonna do? Oh well. Let me give a uh, let me give this meat a taste here. Oh, it's just falling apart, man. I mean Well, I said that. Come on, give me a little piece here. My god, that is so tender. You know, uh, Chris DIYer, DIYer, E R. Uh, you know, I'll try and remember to put a link to his channel. He's doing some solar cooking right now, and he bought a, uh, oh God, it's a round solar cooker, and I can, Rand, Rand, is that the name of it? I can't remember, I think it's Rand, and it's this cylindrical tube, and uh, man, he's cooked lasagna in it, and potatoes, made brownies. I think he's hooked. And uh, if you get a solar oven, you will be hooked too. There's just something, something, it just adds something when you cook in the sun. Anyway, I'm going to eat. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and put all these videos up. Uh, when I get back to work on that knife, I'll start to show a few more clips of it. So uh, let me see. Do I have an audience? Yes. There's one. Uh, there's two more. Bon appétit